People always say life takes unexpected turns, but I never cared for that kind of talk. I'm a straightforward man. I do things by the book, no drama, no unnecessary complexity. Routine is what keeps the world going. You wake up, you go to work, you come home, and you do it all over again. No complaints. If anything, I thought this is how life should be lived. You'll hear a lot of stories from people about how love fades, how marriage changes. But not me. I don't entertain any of that sentimental nonsense. My marriage was fine, or so I thought. We had our routine, our life together. Things weren't glamorous, but why should they be? What matters is stability, not chasing after every little thrill like some lost teenager. But here's where things got interesting, and it's something you're going to want to hear. I'll be honest, I'm not the kind of guy to overthink feelings. I never expected excitement every day, and I didn't need it. Turns out, not everyone sees life that way, especially not my wife. She had a different vision, one that clashed with mine in ways I couldn't have predicted. And when that clash happened, it set off a chain of events that I didn't see coming. I used to think that a good marriage is built on understanding, compromise, and, most importantly, loyalty. But loyalty is a tricky thing, isn't it? You can't demand it from someone who doesn't value it the same way you do. Looking back, I should have seen the signs sooner, but I wasn't the kind to dig too deep into things. I trusted her. Mistake number one. This isn't some sob story about betrayal or heartbreak. It's a story about reality, about what happens when two people in a marriage don't want the same thing anymore. So here we are, and trust me, what you're about to hear will make you rethink everything you think you know about relationships. There's a lot more to the story, and it's going to get more interesting from here. I'm not going to sugarcoat anything, and I won't bother with emotional speeches. What happened, happened. You'll hear it exactly how it went down. Stay tuned, you won't be disappointed. Life falls into routine. It's just how things work. You wake up, do your job, handle your responsibilities, and repeat. That's the way I see it. There's a kind of order in routine, a stability. Things may not always be thrilling, but they're solid. For me, that's how you know you've made something lasting a life that runs like a well-oiled machine. Sure, there are ups and downs, but nothing too chaotic, nothing that can't be managed. But my wife? She wasn't built like that. She hated routine, absolutely feared it. To her, living a predictable life was worse than anything else. She needed constant change, excitement, something to keep her on her toes every day. While I found peace and structure, she saw it as a prison. It became clear that we had completely different ideas of what life and marriage should be. The problem wasn't just her wanting excitement. She expected me to be the one to provide it. She thought it was my job to make life an adventure for her, to constantly come up with new ways to keep things fresh. It wasn't enough to have a stable, predictable life together. That wasn't good enough for her. She wanted thrills, and I was supposed to deliver them without any effort on her part. This difference in mindset started to show itself more and more. One evening, she came home, sat down across from me, and just came out with it. I'm bored, she said, plain and simple. She wasn't talking about being bored with a hobby or a job. She was talking about life or life. I remember the way she said it like it was my fault, like I had somehow failed to provide the excitement she craved. I wasn't angry at first, more confused, if anything. I thought we were doing fine. Sure, life had settled into a pattern, but that's what happens after years together, right? That's normal, but not for her. She started talking about how she needed more from me, more excitement, more surprises. She said life should feel like an adventure, and I was supposed to be the one to lead her through it. She talked as if it was all on me to fix things. You need to try harder, she said. Harder to entertain her, to make things interesting again. Like I was supposed to be some kind of circus act, constantly performing to keep her engaged. Meanwhile, she didn't seem too eager to contribute. She just sat there, waiting for me to make the effort. I could tell this conversation wasn't just some passing comment. She meant it. To her, 
life without daily thrills wasn't worth living. And she was making it clear that if I didn't do something about it, there would be consequences. It wasn't a threat, exactly, but I could feel the weight of it. The absurdity of the situation hit me hard. She expected me to jump through hoops to keep her entertained, as if a marriage is supposed to be some endless source of excitement. That wasn't what I signed up for. I wanted a partner, someone who shared in the UPS and downs, the routines and the surprises, not someone who treated life like a never-ending game. But she had different ideas. That conversation was a turning point. It's when I realized that no matter what I did, it probably wouldn't be enough. She was chasing something I didn't even believe existed, this idea that life is supposed to be one big adventure, full of excitement every day. And the worst part? I was the one expected to make it happen. After that conversation, I knew I had to do something to keep her happy, even if I thought the whole thing was ridiculous. So, we started trying out different hobbies. Cooking classes, dancing lessons, even some stupid painting workshops where we were supposed to express ourselves. I went along with it, even though I knew it was all pointless. None of it felt natural, none of it was us. But I did it because she wanted that spark. I wasn't convinced it would change anything, but I figured it was worth a shot. We tried hiking, wine tasting, and even pottery. We'd be surrounded by other couples, all smiling and acting like they were having the time of their lives, while I was just counting the minutes until it was over. Every new activity seemed more absurd than the last. I wasn't built for that kind of constant stimulation. My idea of a good time wasn't standing in some studio trying to mold clay into a bowl. I wasn't miserable, but it all felt forced, like we were pretending to be people we weren't. No matter what we did, nothing changed. She was still restless, always looking for the next thing that might make her feel alive again. Meanwhile, I was just tired, exhausted, really. There was no thrill in any of it for me, just a growing sense that we were wasting our time. She wasn't satisfied, and I was losing patience. But I kept pushing through, hoping that eventually something would click, that maybe she'd settle down once she found what she was looking for. Then I got sick. It wasn't anything serious, just the usual fever and chills that knock you out for a few days. She had to go to work, so I stayed home, trying to rest and shake it off. By the afternoon, I was feeling bored and figured I'd watch a movie to pass the time. My laptop was dead, and I didn't feel like getting up to charge it. Her laptop was right there on the table, so I grabbed it without thinking twice. She never had a problem with me using it before. As I opened it, her browser popped up. At first, I didn't pay much attention just the usual stuff social media, some online shopping tabs. But then I saw something that made me stop. There were search results about how to spice up your sex life and not just any basic articles. These were more. Specific. Detailed. Things about open relationships, articles about the pros and cons of bringing someone else into your marriage. I sat there staring at the screen, trying to make sense of it. Why would she be looking this stuff up? It wasn't just curiosity there were too many articles, too many search queries. It was clear this wasn't a one-time thing. She had been thinking about this for a while. A pit formed in my stomach. I wasn't angry yet, just... uncomfortable. Like something wasn't right, but I couldn't put my finger on it. The searches kept playing in my mind, I knew I had to talk to her about it, but I didn't want to jump to conclusions. Maybe it was just her way of exploring ideas, of looking for ways to shake things up. But those specific searches? They didn't sit well with me. This wasn't like her. She was always the one talking about loyalty, about how we needed to work through things together. And now she was reading about open marriages? The more I thought about it, the more unsettled I became. I didn't know what to believe. Was this just harmless curiosity, or was there something more to it? I decided that I'd wait until she got home and bring it up casually, just to see how she reacted. But deep down, I already had a sinking feeling that this wasn't going to end well. When she came home that evening, I was still thinking about what I'd found on her laptop. I didn't plan some big confrontation, 
but I knew I had to ask her about it. So I waited until we were both settled in, and then I brought it up. I kept it simple at first. I was using your laptop earlier, I said, and I noticed some of your recent searches. You've been reading a lot about. Open marriages, I watched her face closely, trying to gauge her reaction. At first, she looked surprised, but not in the way I expected. It was more like she was caught off guard, but wasn't entirely shocked that I'd found out. She brushed it off quickly, saying, Oh, that? I was just curious. You know how it is. The internet shows you one article, and then you end up reading another. It doesn't mean anything her voice was casual, almost too casual, like she had rehearsed the answer. I didn't buy it. Curious, ha, I replied, keeping my tone calm. So you're just reading about open marriages for fun? No reason I wasn't accusing her yet, but I wanted her to know that I wasn't stupid. Something was going on, and I needed her to be honest. I could see her start to fidget a little like she knew she had to come up with something better than that weak excuse. She sighed, trying to act annoyed, like I was making a big deal out of nothing. Look, everyone wonders about these things at some point. It's not like I actually want to do it. I was just curious, okay? But I could see right through her. There was something deeper she wasn't saying. She wasn't just curious this was something she had been seriously considering. I could feel it. I pressed her again, this time more directly. So that's it? Just curiosity? You don't want to try any of this stuff I paused, giving her a chance to come clean. The silence hung between us for a moment before she finally broke. She looked down, not meeting my eyes, and that's when I knew the truth was coming. All right, fine, she said quietly. I do want to try it, she paused, taking a deep breath and then looked up at me, her expression almost pleading. I've been thinking about this for a while. I need something more. I love you, but I want to explore other things. With other people. Her words hit me like a punch to the gut, but I didn't react. I just listened, waiting to hear how far this had gone. I want to open our marriage, she continued. Just for a little while. I think it could help us, you know? Help me feel alive again. It's not about you, it's just, I need this. I want to have sex with someone else, but I don't want to lose you. She looked desperate now, almost like she expected me to agree, like this was something I'd even consider. At that moment, I realized what had happened. She wasn't asking for permission to cheat, she was already doing it. This wasn't a request. She was just trying to justify what she'd already done. I felt the cold, hard truth settle in my chest. She had already crossed the line, and now she was scrambling to clean up the mess. I didn't say anything right away. I just looked at her, letting the silence do the talking. I could see the fear in her eyes, the realization that I wasn't going to play along with her twisted game. That's when she started begging. Please, just let me do this. It'll be temporary, I swear. It's just something I need to get out of my system. I don't want to hurt you, but I can't keep pretending I'm happy when I'm not. Her words were pathetic, but they told me everything I needed to know. She wasn't asking me for permission, she was asking for forgiveness, for a way to make herself feel better about what she had done. I didn't lose my temper, didn't yell. I just sat there, letting her dig herself deeper into her own guilt. Every word she said made it more obvious that she had betrayed me. Then it hit me the only reason she was asking now was because she had already been with someone else. She wasn't asking to explore, she was asking for me to condone the fact that she'd cheated. I stayed calm, but inside I was already planning my next move. I wasn't going to let this slide. I needed to know who it was, and then I'd deal with them both. I looked her straight in the eye and said, You've already slept with someone, haven't you? She froze, and in that split second, her face gave her away. She didn't need to say anything. I already knew the answer. All that was left was for me to figure out who it was and how I was going to make them both pay. I didn't show any anger when she first told me what she wanted. I agreed, at least on the surface. Sure, I said. If that's what you need, 
We can talk about it, but the truth is, I had no intention of allowing her to humiliate me like that. I only agreed to buy myself time to figure out exactly what was going on behind my back. I wasn't going to be the fool in this situation. I wasn't just going to sit back and let her walk all over me. If she wanted an open marriage, I'd let her think she was getting one just long enough for me to get my revenge. A few days later, my chance came. She was in the shower, and her phone was sitting on the kitchen counter. We never really hid our phones from each other, so it wasn't suspicious for me to have it. I picked it up and unlocked it. I wasn't sure what I expected to find, but part of me hoped I was wrong, that maybe it was all in my head. But the moment I opened her messages, I knew I wasn't wrong. There was a long thread with one guy. Just one. Not multiple men, not random flings, this was something more focused, more intentional. The tone of the messages told me everything I needed to know. This wasn't some casual thing she was emotionally invested. He, on the other hand, seemed irritated. As I scrolled through their conversation, I saw her getting increasingly frustrated with him. She was practically begging him for attention, and he was holding back. Why won't you FK me while I'm still with my husband, she wrote, clearly angry. And his response, fix your situation, and then we'll talk. I'm not doing this with him in the picture. It was pathetic, really. She was jumping through hoops for this guy while he was playing it cool, clearly not wanting to get too involved until she fixed the issue of me. It was obvious now that she had been pushing the idea of an open marriage not because she wanted to explore, but because this one guy didn't want to deal with her while she was still married to me. She wasn't after freedom or adventure, she was after him. I kept reading, piecing together their entire relationship. It seemed like she had been doing all of this just to keep him interested. He was the driving force behind her obsession with opening our marriage. And yet, he didn't even seem that interested. He was just stringing her along, waiting for her to solve her marriage problem. In a way, that made it worse. She wasn't just cheating, she was humiliating herself for a guy who didn't even care about her all that much. As I scrolled back further, I found something else that caught my attention. She had been messaging her best friend, discussing this guy in detail. They talked about how much she liked him, but there was something else in there. Her friend wasn't just a passive listener. She was involved. They were discussing him like he was some kind of prize, but then the conversation shifted, and suddenly they were talking about me, about the problem of being married to me. That's when the idea hit me. Her best friend might not like me much, but she definitely hated this guy. It didn't take long to connect the dots. This wasn't just some random fling. This guy was her best friend's ex. Suddenly, I had a plan forming in my mind. If her best friend was angry at her for going after her ex, she might be willing to help me in this little game. This wasn't just a betrayal of me, it was a betrayal of her closest friend too. I put the phone back where I found it, already knowing what I had to do. I wasn't going to let this go. She thought she could walk all over me, but she had no idea what was coming. I had the upper hand now, and I was going to use it. This wasn't just about getting even. It was about making her pay and dragging her precious little fling down with her. I didn't waste any time. After going through her messages and figuring out the whole situation, I knew exactly who I needed to call. Her best friend. We weren't close, but I knew she hated this guy, her ex, the same one my wife was throwing herself at. I dialed her number, and when she answered, I didn't bother with small talk. I went straight to the point. Listen, I said, I know about him. I know about what's been going on between my wife and your ex. I found the messages there was a pause on the other end of the line. For a moment, I thought maybe she'd hang up or tell me it wasn't her problem. But then she spoke, her voice cold and sharp. That bastard, she muttered. I knew something was up, but I didn't think she'd go after him of all people. We talked for a while, and she laid it all out for me. Apparently, this guy had a history of playing women against each other, and her falling for him was just another example. She didn't hide her anger either. She was furious, not just at him, but at my wife for crossing that line. 
It wasn't just about the affair anymore. It was personal for her too. We were both screwed over by the same people, and that gave us common ground. I've got a plan, I said, after we both finished venting. This isn't about just catching them in the act. It's about making sure they know they've lost. I'm done with my wife, but I want to make sure they feel the fallout from this. She was quiet for a moment, but then she agreed. I'm in, she said. Let's make them pay. I could hear the anger in her voice. She was ready to burn this bridge, and so was I. Together, we started figuring out the details. She had already heard about the next time they were supposed to meet up. A fancy dinner at a restaurant downtown, where they thought no one would notice them. My wife had been telling her best friend all about it, bragging even. I guess she didn't think her friend would be a problem, but now that same friend was going to help me ruin their little evening. We made our plan simple but effective. We'd show up at the restaurant, dressed to impress, and make sure we were noticed. No drama, no scenes, just let them see us and realize that their secret wasn't so secret anymore. My wife's best friend knew exactly how to twist the knife with her ex, and I was going to make sure my wife understood what it felt like to lose. I found out exactly when and where they were meeting. All the details lined up perfectly. I knew it would be a shock to her, seeing me there with her best friend. And even better, I knew it would rattle that guy too. He thought he was in control, pulling the strings, but now we were the ones with the upper hand. The idea of walking into that restaurant, knowing what was coming, filled me with a cold satisfaction. I wasn't interested in a shouting match or a fight. No, this was about making a statement. They thought they were clever, sneaking around behind our backs. But they had no idea how close we were to turning the tables. Everything was set. We had the time, the place, and the perfect setup to throw their whole plan into chaos. All that was left was to show up and watch the fallout unfold. I couldn't wait to see the look on their faces when they realized they'd lost, that their game was over. The night finally came. My wife left, dressed up and excited for what she thought would be another secret evening with her lover. Little did she know, I was already on my way to meet her best friend, and we were heading to the exact same place. I made sure to dress sharp nothing flashy, just enough to show I was in control. But it was her best friend who really stole the show. She walked out of her apartment looking stunning, like she was ready to own the night. It was clear she was just as eager for this as I was. We arrived at the restaurant right on time. It was one of those upscale places where everyone is trying to impress each other, but I wasn't interested in the crowd. I was only there for one reason to see the look on their faces when we walked in. As we stepped through the door, I scanned the room quickly. There they were, sitting in a corner, laughing like they had the world at their feet. The moment they saw us, their expressions froze. My wife's face drained of all color, and her lover well, he looked like he'd seen a ghost. It was perfect. We didn't even have to say anything. Just our presence there was enough to turn their smug little dinner into a nightmare. I could feel the tension immediately. My wife's eyes darted between me and her best friend, trying to figure out what the hell was going on. We didn't make a scene. That wasn't the point. Instead, we smiled and found our own table, making sure it was close enough that they couldn't ignore us. Throughout the evening, we laughed, ordered drinks, and had a great time, all while they sat there stewing in their own discomfort. I could feel their eyes on us the entire time, filled with anger and confusion. They knew they were caught, but they had no idea how to react. I didn't need to say a word to them. Every laugh, every smile between me and her best friend was like a dagger to their egos. My wife looked like she was going to explode, but she didn't dare confront me in front of all those people. Her lover, on the other hand, just sat there, avoiding eye contact and shifting uncomfortably in his seat. He knew this wasn't going to end well for him. As the evening went on, we kept the pressure up, enjoying ourselves while they were visibly crumbling across the room. It was clear they had lost control of the situation, and there was nothing they could do to stop it. The satisfaction I felt was undeniable. It wasn't about revenge anymore, it was about taking back the power they thought they had over me. 
After a while, we decided it was time to go. We paid the bill and stood up to leave. My wife shot me a desperate look, but I ignored it. Her best friend threw one last glance at her ex, and the hatred in his eyes told me everything I needed to know. This game was over, and we had won. As we walked out of the restaurant, I couldn't help but feel the weight of it all lift off my shoulders. We got into the car, and I could feel the shift in the air. We weren't done yet. There was one final piece of this puzzle left to play. We were heading back to my house, and my wife would be coming home soon, unaware of the storm that was waiting for her. It was time to confront her, face to face, and finally lay everything out in the open. As we drove, her best friend and I exchanged a knowing glance. The night wasn't over yet. There was one more reckoning to come, and I was ready for it. By the time my wife walked through that door, she'd have no choice but to face the consequences of her actions. When we got back to my place, the tension from the restaurant hadn't entirely faded, but we were riding high on the adrenaline. We opened a bottle of wine and started talking, letting the frustration and anger spill out. It wasn't long before the conversation turned more personal, the barriers breaking down with each sip. She was still furious about her ex, and I was still fuming about my wife. But somewhere along the way, the anger transformed into something else. I'm not sure when exactly it happened, but the conversation shifted, and we started getting closer, physically. It wasn't planned. It wasn't even something I thought I'd ever do. But there we were, the heat of the moment pushing us toward one inevitable conclusion. The next thing I knew, we were tearing each other's clothes off. Maybe it was revenge. Maybe it was just the culmination of everything that had happened. Either way, we ended up in bed, and there was no going back from that point. As we were tangled up in the middle of it, lost in the madness of the situation, I heard the front door creak open. I froze for a split second, knowing exactly what was about to happen. My wife had come home. The sound of her footsteps grew louder, and then suddenly, there she was, standing in the doorway of our bedroom, her eyes wide with shock and fury. She screamed. What the hell is this? Her voice was shaking with disbelief, her face a mix of rage and betrayal. But her best friend didn't flinch. She calmly got out of bed, started putting her clothes back on without a word. It was like she didn't care at all that my wife had caught us. She knew this was the end of whatever twisted friendship they'd had. I stayed in bed, looking directly at my wife. What's the problem, I ask, keeping my voice cold. You wanted an open marriage, right? This is what it looks like. Are you enjoying it? My words hit her like a slap, and I could see the realization sink in. This wasn't the game she thought she was playing. Now the rules were different, and she didn't like it one bit. She screamed at me, still in shock. I'm supposed to be the one in the open relationship. You had no right to do this. Her voice was shrill, desperate. It was almost laughable how she couldn't see the irony. She wanted all the benefits, all the freedom, but the moment I turned the tables, she acted like it was some sort of betrayal. I shrugged, keeping my voice even. Oh, I see. So it's fine for you to cheat, but the second I do it, it's a problem I couldn't help but smirk. Looks like you weren't as ready for this open marriage as you thought. And by the way, your best friend, she's fantastic in bed. Better than I expected. Maybe you should go run off to your little boy toy now. She was speechless for a moment, her face contorting in anger and humiliation. There was nothing she could say to make it right, no excuse that would undo what she had started. Her whole plan had backfired spectacularly, and now she was standing there, completely powerless, just like I had been when this whole thing began. The room was silent except for her heavy breathing, and in that moment, I knew the final nail had been hammered into the coffin of our marriage. There was no coming back from this, not that I wanted to. I had made my point, and now, she had to live with the consequences of the mess she had created. After the shock and screaming died down, I got up from the bed, calm and collected. My wife was still standing there, too stunned to move, her face twisted in rage and confusion. I didn't say a word to her. I didn't need to. I walked past her, straight to the closet, and began pulling out her clothes, 
One by one, I threw them onto the floor without any hesitation. She started to yell again, asking me what the hell I was doing, but I didn't bother to respond. I opened the window, the cold night air hitting me as I grabbed the first pile of her clothes. With a single motion, I tossed them out onto the street below. The sight of them fluttering down gave me a sense of satisfaction I hadn't expected. It wasn't just about getting rid of her things, it was about taking back control. She had ripped our marriage apart piece by piece, and now I was tearing down what was left. She rushed over, grabbing my arm, trying to stop me. What are you doing, she shouted, her voice frantic. You can't just throw my stuff out like that. I pulled my arm away from her grip and looked her dead in the eye. Watch me, I said, my voice low and steady. There was no more yelling, no more drama. This was the end, and I was making sure she knew it. Her protests got quieter as I kept throwing more of her things out the window. Dresses, shoes, bags, everything she had packed into our life together was now scattered on the ground below. With each toss, I felt a weight lifting off my shoulders. This wasn't just a petty act of revenge. It was cleansing, a way to physically remove her presence from my life. At some point, she stopped trying to stop me. She just stood there, watching as I emptied the closet and dresser. I could see the realization hit her, this was real. There was no going back, no fixing this. She had played her game, and now it was over. I wasn't giving her the chance to manipulate me anymore. She was out, and I wasn't letting her drag me down with her. When I finished, I closed the closet door and turned to face her one last time. Go, I said. Get your stuff off the street and get out of here. Where done her eyes were wide, and for a brief moment, I saw something close to fear in them. She tried to speak, but the words seemed to die in her throat. There was nothing left to say, anyway. I walked over to the window, watching as her things lay scattered on the sidewalk. This is what you wanted, right, I said, not even looking at her. Your freedom. Well, here it is. Now get out of my house. I didn't care where she went or who she ran to. All I knew was that she wasn't staying here another second. Without waiting for her to respond, I left the room and headed downstairs. I heard her footsteps behind me as she scrambled to gather her things, but I didn't look back. I had given her the open door she so desperately wanted. Now she could walk through it and never come back. As she scrambled to collect her things from the street, I stood by the front door, waiting. My patience had run out. This wasn't a discussion anymore. This was me ending it. The weight of everything she'd done settled heavily on me, but there was no turning back now. When she finally dragged her last bag to the door, I looked her straight in the eye, unflinching. You're not coming back here, I said coldly. I want a divorce. This is over. She looked stunned, like she hadn't truly believed it would come to this. Are you serious, she asked, her voice trembling. You can't just end it like this, but I wasn't interested in her pleas or excuses anymore. All those games, all the lies, this was the only logical conclusion. I had made my decision, and nothing she could say would change that. You ended this marriage the second you started sneaking around, I replied, my voice steady. I'm not playing your game anymore. You wanted freedom? You've got it. Now take it and go her face shifted from shock to anger, but even that didn't affect me. I was beyond feeling anything for her at this point. I just wanted her gone. She started to argue, trying to twist the situation like she always did. You slept with my best friend, she spat like she had any ground to stand on. I didn't even blink. Yeah. I said, and you were off screwing some other guy behind my back long before that. So don't act like you're the victim here. We're done the weight of those words hung in the air, final and undeniable. For a moment, she stood there, speechless, as if the reality was just now sinking in. She had thought she could manipulate her way out of this, like she had with so many other things, but I wasn't that same person anymore. I had seen through her lies, and there was no sympathy left in me. The door was wide open, both literally and figuratively. It was time for her to walk through it. I'll get a lawyer, I said, cutting through whatever she was about to say. This divorce is happening, 
whether you like it or not. You've got no say in it anymore, I watched her carefully, waiting for any sign of resistance, but she knew I was serious. She could see it in my eyes, there was no going back. The power she thought she had was gone. She muttered something under her breath, grabbed the last of her things, and walked out the door. I didn't watch her go. I didn't need to. I just closed the door behind her, locking it, not just physically but mentally, shutting off whatever part of me had still been holding on to this toxic relationship. It was done. As I stood in the quiet house, I felt a strange sense of calm wash over me. The storm had passed, and now it was just me, free of her lies, her betrayal, her manipulations. The future wasn't clear yet, but one thing was certain I wasn't tied to her anymore. The divorce was inevitable, and I welcomed it. This chapter of my life was over. The days after the divorce felt like a fresh start. I'd spent so long tangled in the mess of my marriage that I had forgotten what it meant to live on my own terms. With each passing day, I began to rediscover parts of myself that had been buried under the weight of her demands and expectations. I found a new sense of freedom in making my own choices, unencumbered by anyone else's desires. At first, there were moments of loneliness. I'd catch myself glancing at the empty seat across the table during meals, but it quickly faded. I started inviting friends over more often, rekindling old connections that had suffered during my marriage. We would laugh over beers, share stories, and I realized how much I had missed genuine companionship. It felt good to have people around who actually cared about me. I also took the opportunity to focus on my career. With no distractions at home, I poured my energy into work, aiming for the promotion I had been chasing for years. The late nights and weekends I used to spend trying to please my wife were now dedicated to my ambitions. I worked hard, and it paid off before long. I was recognized for my efforts, and I found myself moving up the ladder faster than I had ever imagined. As the months rolled on, I started to explore new hobbies and interests. I signed up for a cooking class, something my ex-wife had always scoffed at. To my surprise, I discovered a passion for it. I relished the chance to learn, experiment, and create dishes that made me proud. Each successful meal was a little victory, a reminder of my independence and ability to enjoy life without someone else's judgment hovering over me. Traveling became a priority as well. I had always wanted to explore new places, but my ex had preferred staying in her comfort zone. With the divorce finalized, I booked a solo trip to a destination I had long dreamed of visiting. Standing atop a mountain, taking in the breathtaking view, I realized how far I had come. The thrill of adventure was exhilarating, and it reminded me that life was meant to be lived fully and freely. I also learned a lot about myself during this time. I had been so focused on what my ex wanted that I had neglected my own needs and desires. In this newfound solitude, I began to reflect on my values and what I truly wanted out of life. I set goals personal and professional that were all about me, not what I thought someone else would approve of. It was liberating to focus on my own happiness for a change. Eventually, I even started dating again. It was awkward at first, but I approached it with a newfound confidence. I learned to appreciate the small things shared laughter, meaningful conversations, and the simple thrill of getting to know someone without the baggage of expectations. Each date reminded me that I was worthy of love and companionship, and I took my time to find the right person, rather than rushing into anything. As I settled into this new chapter, I realized how much I had gained from the experience. The divorce had been painful, but it had also been transformative. I was no longer that man who felt trapped and powerless. I was strong, self-assured, and ready to embrace whatever life had to offer next. The future was bright, and I was finally in control of my own destiny.